a KQED television production. It kind of was like the bang that set off the night. That is the funkiest restaurant. The honey on the prawns will make your insides smile. So. <laughs> More tortillas, please. <laughs> What is comfort food if it isn't gluten and grease? I love creme brulee. <laughs> the octopus should have been like quadrupus because it was really small. <laughs> and you know that when you split something, all the calories evaporate and then there's none. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2015 Subaru Impreza are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru, online at Subaru.com. Integrated Resources Group, over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin, online at marblecompany.com. Natural Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport, with service to Europe, Mexico, Hawaii, and across the USA. Park close, fly on time. Learn more at exploreonics.com. Support KQED's vehicle donation program and donate a car to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by cars. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one of them recommends their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This time, Director of Project Management, Shireen Kassira, likes to add a little culinary adventure to her life, finding hidden gems in small towns filled with big flavors. And former architectural designer Joel Rogers is schooled in the art of cooking with a true admiration for gifted chefs who provide him with memories to last a lifetime. And public relations consultant Roberta Klugman loves her adopted hometown of Oakland. In fact, she's a one-woman spokesperson for the East Bay City. Yeah. And her spot has it all, a Chez Panisse alum as the chef owner who showcases seasonal Mexican fare. In the Swan's Market on Washington Street, you'll find cosecha. Cosecha means harvest. We're in the Bay Area, so we're very spoiled. We're able to source from the best. My name is Dominica Rice, and I'm the chef owner of Cosecha here in Old Oakland. I started at the California Culinary Academy in San Francisco and started working professionally and just dedicating all my attention to restaurants and kitchens. I moved to New York, but I knew I had to, at some point, move to Mexico City and immerse myself. I was so inspired by the señoras who cooked inside of the farmer's market and the specials that they were known for, such as moles or pozoles or tamales and wanted to create that same vibe here. The special thing about Fridays in Old Oakland is definitely the farmer's market. It'll dictate what is gonna be the special for the day, either for the agua frescas or for a salsa or for the vegetarian course. We were always thinking when we were creating menus, what are we craving this time of year? What are we serving our families this time of year? And that's what we serve to our customers here at Cosecha. All right, Roberta, cosecha, now in wine, that means harvest or the year the grapes were harvested. This is all about freshness and harvest, isn't it, this it place? It absolutely is. Fresh, vibrant flavors, seasonal, whatever is fresh, Dominica, the chef owner, puts into her food and it's delicious. And she is a chef with quite a culinary background. Indeed she is. Uh, she went to the CCA, as I understand it, mm -hmm. uh, and she also was at Chez Panisse. She's worked in Mexico, and I believe uh, Danielle in, mm -hmm. in New York, and she is bringing 
her experience of her grandmother's cooking to Oakland, and it is it is just splendid. The mole verde that she does, you know, it seems so simple if you've ever tried to make it. It's very is, difficult. It's very Absolutely. difficult, and she does a splendid job. It's vibrant, and the chicken is just delicious, tender and succulent, and I like it so much that I'll go there for lunch and then take a side home. And the tortillas that go with everything are made to order. I actually asked her once, why do I like your tortillas best? And they make them to order. They, That's the reason. Yeah, yeah. Shireen, you're over there shaking your head. Mm -hmm. You had the tortillas. Oh, yeah. I love any place that does homemade tortillas. Um, delicious, delicious. And I also had the mole verde. Yeah. Um, and I had a mixed, mixed review. Maybe it was just the day they went a little skimpy on the chicken and a lot of sauce. Oh. Um, the rice was cooked perfect. Uh, yes. And the beans were, everything was fresh. I just wish that they had added more. More chicken? Chicken mm -hmm. in yeah. there. The way she makes the beans and the rice, because mm -hmm. those are fresh. Those aren't Excellent. from a can or the a bottle butter. or anything. It's like actually real butter in the rice. And the beans are something extraordinary yeah. compared to your average beans. I actually kicked off with the totopas, which were like puffed uh, chips with um, some guajillo sauce over them with cojito cheese. And that was really, really nice. But the dish for me was the carne adobada. That was through the roof. Their guajillo sauce is so good and it was so brilliantly red and the flavor was intense and it, it took the pork and it just really integrated well into it and not one bite, not one bite had a bit of gristle nor fat in it and that's why I think it was really fantastic quality. Uh, we had the citrus salad, and it was wow. really quite amazing. Yeah, it, yeah, is, it, is worth going, it is worth going back for. There's cucumber, there's bib lettuce, there's the citrus dressing, which is just right. I mean, they don't overdress anything. The salt levels, almost all their food are right. just fantastic, the sensitivity. But what really made it, there were pumpkin seeds in it, and they didn't salt them, and that made it mm. even better that it wasn't salted. Right. Gives um, you the texture without giving was. you the salt. And then they threw in some goodies like avocado and some other things. And let me tell you, everything was just scrumptious and absolutely the place to go for lunch. I would. I, I still want the mole. That citrus salad, I always get the citrus salad every time I'm there. And it may change to mango or something else, but it's always so bright. The word that comes to mind is everything is bright. They do uh, agave cocktails. They, they have agave wine cocktails. Yeah, and it's their margarita, mm -hmm. which I was thoroughly prepared not to be excited about, and it was perfect with the food. And they do um, an unoaked Chardonnay on tap, mm -hmm. which also went very nicely with, with the food as and well. And tap wines mm -hmm. are the top trend right now. You know, to get wines on tap, you can get some terrific wines on mm -hmm. tap, so always check those out if you get a chance. Yeah. Well, I always get the pork belly tacos because it is pork belly, but it's not greasy, and it's full flavored because because she is a master at seasoning. I also am totally on the pork belly bandwagon. <laughs> so if it's pork belly, I gotta try it. Uh, I think we all are. <laughs> pork belly, <laughs> pork yes. belly. It's bacon uber, it's, it's good. <laughs> and so uh, it didn't have quite as much as what I would have liked on it. It didn't have, it was good, but I just didn't come away saying, man, that was really one of my top tens. And I wanted it to be because I liked the restaurant so much. As for the fish tacos, that was one of the most disappointing things on the mm -hmm. menu for us. And I found so many things that I did like there. I just, uh, but I wouldn't go in that direction. You agree? Stay away well, from the fish tacos? Well, I want to know what, which fish it was. It, it was. was. it wasn't the shrimp, the wild shrimp. Oh, oh no, no, I wanted the, the, shri the yeah, shrimp, yeah. I, but it's only there on like Fridays? You always yeah. check on, oh, on what their menu is. I was are. going after that and yeah, it was uh, not there. Because I'm not a shrimp eater. I think shrimp is bland and not interesting. But the wild shrimp is very sweet and tender and, and delicious in that. So shrimp. check the daily specials is the check key the, advice. Yes. All yeah. right. We had some leftover chicken at Chirote and went home and I ate it the next day. And it was beautiful. I think what had happened was with that incredible carne adovada, I was just overwhelmed with the intensity of flavors. I didn't really recognize just how good it was. I mean, the idea of going there and getting something <laughs> for lunch and bringing home for later on, I'm down with that. Yeah, yeah. you're going to try that. It's, it's really good. I do appreciate that everything seems seemed very um, fresh and local. I, I really like that. Um, and then a chocolate chip cookie that was maybe the best I've ever had. It was yeah, like oh. better than homemade, rich gooey chocolate, not hard. It was a soft mm -hmm. cookie. So. And she, she makes those herself. And it's, a, it's not really a dessert place, but those chocolate chip cookies just hit the spot. It's an impulse yeah, buy yeah. because it's sitting by the cash <laughs> register. And I was like, oh, I got to have it. And one. you have to do it. <laughs>
And it's a casual atmosphere. This is not, you it's know. It's casual and communal, I'll say, mm -hmm. because it's in the Swan's Market, which has three or four other wonderful restaurants. You can, depending on how large your table is, you can sit with other people. You can sit by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's very welcoming. It's very bustling and vibrant, like the food. Mm -hmm. I was enthralled with the architecture and the history yes, of the place. Yes. It is one of the most amazing historical features of Oakland. Yeah. All right, Roberta, it's your restaurant. Give us a quick summary. It's a great place, vibrant flavors, fresh food, and at a great value, lovingly prepared by a wonderful chef. All right, and Shireen? I would say it's a really unique find. Um, the atmosphere is fun, and the food is fresh and organic. It's delicious. Okay, and Joel? I think its freshness uh, and attention to detail is so worth the money. I would absolutely go back there for lunch, and I have to go there for the mole. I've been thinking about that ever since I've been there. <laughs> All right, if you would like to try Cosecha, it's on Washington at 9th in Oakland. The telephone number is 510-452-5900. It's open for lunch and dinner Monday through Saturday. Reservations are not accepted, and the average tab without drinks is around $15. Once known as a local high-class brothel, Shireen's Pick is replacing carnal comfort with comfort cuisine. Approachable by land or sea, the ethereal decor combines Victorian chic with hunting lodge brawn. In Port Costa at the Bull Valley Roadhouse. Port Costa was a port in the 1880s, and now it harks back to its past. Some of the reactions that we get from people who come out here, they're astounded that they've arrived here. They then walk in and their eyes go really wild. I'm Samuel Spurrier. I'm an owner and the floor manager of the Bull Valley Roadhouse in Port Costa, California, and this is my partner. I'm Earl Flewellen, and I'm the owner of the Bull Valley Roadhouse. The third partner is David Williams, and he's the chef. And David is exceptional with food, locally sourced, organic. The Bull Valley Roadhouse is American food made from scratch by people who care about what they're doing. Our pre-prohibition cocktails are based on recipes that our bar manager, Tamir, has dug up wonderful cocktails that evoke an era that can't be matched. Here you'll find definitely an 1880s vibe, but you're going to find things that were put in in 1940 and 1970, and those are part of the story. The Victorian furniture is my great-grandmother's, and I always joke that the reason why we opened the restaurant was so that we could get it out of the house. That is true. <laughs> All right, Shereen, now tell us a little bit about Port Costa. Not a lot of people know about this. Yeah, um, Port Costa is a uh, historic town. Mm -hmm. um, it is on the Carquinas Strait, and it's a population of less than 200 people. Um, there's really a post office, the restaurant, a bar, and an old hotel that's being renovated. Mm -hmm. The Intercontinental Railway went through Port Costa, and so they would bring in goods. So how did you discover it? I mean, it was a brothel. I don't yes. want to go, you know, but. It was a brothel. <laughs> I found it, I was actually at the bar with some friends and stumbled across the restaurant and. Uh, not literally, but. Not, well, <laughs> um, we'll just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and that's how I found it and then mm -hmm. read up about it afterwards because I was curious. And they have pre-prohibition, I, I know I'm saying that wrong. Pre-prohibition. Thank you, cocktails, which is sort of unusual. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun. Um, the atmosphere is different. Everybody I've ever brought there is kind of amazed because it's just a, a quirky find. It's a mm -hmm. casual atmosphere, but yet it's, it's really delicious high-end quality food. My favorite dish is the fried chicken, something I rarely get otherwise. Very, very crispy on the outside, tender and juicy on the inside. It just tastes really fresh. Sometimes places might have a lot of dark meat in there or a lot of fat. It's none of those things. Did you enjoy your experience, Roberta? Oh, was this a discovery for you? It was a discovery. I had been hearing about it, mm -hmm. and uh, a couple people had told me about it. It had been written up in Edible East Bay, I mm -hmm. believe, and I've been going, oh, I want to get there, but oh my gosh, I don't want to drive there. Right. Um, mostly because I don't like driving at night, <laughs> and so someone else drove and it's such a breath of early California so you put all those wonderful historic notes together with really delicious food high quality food good value we love the Brussels sprouts mm -hmm. they were charred perfectly they were delicious not too vinegary which can happen mm -hmm. with Brussels sprouts I think and no bitterness in them the grilled squid a Monterey squid was done to perfection I, I think they missed a beat on the salad part of that in that it was a very watery salad dressing with blood orange, but we couldn't detect any blood orange. 
and the duck liver pate was really good, I think a little under seasoned, but good and you know, it's very, as much as it's comfort food, it is very sophisticated mm. comfort food. Did you agree, Joel, when you went? Uh, I found it to be so funky. That is the funkiest restaurant. Uh, as it leads you in through those, uh, the wooden plank floors and you've got the old beautiful bar on your left and you've got the photographs on your right and you go into the dining room and you have those, all this ethereal art from a local artist on the wall. Hunting Lodge Victorian, but there's something very kind of spooky ethereal about it too. It's, it's um, a big, great place for Halloween, I think. <laughs> and started with uh, the Brussels sprouts and really adored them, particularly at the bottom where you had gotten the balsamic vinegar yeah, really yeah, concentrated. Yeah. Yeah. Followed that up with the PEI mussels, and the mussels were excellent. The heaping fries on top, it's seasoned perfectly. You've got to take those fries and you've got to dip it in the sauce because it's really <laughs> buttery and garlic and good. Uh, but the aioli on top is what really gives it some brightness. And the fact that the fries stay crisp is amazing. Those two dishes were, were just fantastic. The standouts. And, and they actually have a, a nice small wine list quite affordable, selections from around the world, mostly under $50. So yeah, and nice there are some by the glass. Mm -hmm. Another dish that they do that is a favorite is um, string beans, and it's on the appetizer mm -hmm. menu. It's kind of a Thai spice to it, and mm -hmm. they're crunchy. Really, really good. Mm -hmm. And mac and cheese with the Gruyere is something, I just, you know, if you're gonna just go for it, go for it. Well, we very much enjoyed the ribeye. At first taste, we might have thought it was a little over salted, but it wasn't. Tender, clearly high quality meat. The herb butter that goes with it went beautifully. And also, and I can't remember if it was with that dish, the pickles that they have on the side are also very good. And did you have any desserts, either one of you, or you just couldn't fit it in after all of well, that? We wanted to like the desserts and we wanted to give the chef um, a nod to trying to do a vegan dessert, which mm -hmm. I'd recommend they not do. Mm -hmm. Both desserts we had were, were disappointments, mm -hmm. but I would go back there in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And what about pricing? Did you find that it was fair? I found it uh, reasonable. It was about what I expected. I think there's a sophistication to it. I was disappointed in the quality of the cut of pork I got. I, there was a bit of a mix-up in the um, wait staff, uh, and I. I about a 45 minute lull at one point. We had a little mix up in the menu in that I ordered wrong, or I thought I ordered something and I'd ordered something else, and they handled my confusion very nicely. Service was great and cheerful and sincere. Mm -hmm. But you had a bit of a wait. A real long wait. A real long wait. Mm -hmm. So forget desserts, let's talk cocktails. Mm -hmm. The Jack Rose cocktail, okay. pre-prohibition list. You want to look at that because they are authentic cocktails actually mm -hmm. from the early 1900s and they made it absolutely correctly. I'm not gonna say it was good, but I did have a second. <laughs> and, then there was, and then there were it's bottles. It's the third and that will really tell you Well, there were bottles of wine involved too, so <laughs> it, was, it was like that. I would go back for the cocktails. Cocktails alone. Mm -hmm. All right, this is your spot. Shireen, wrap it up for us. It's a great, fun, something different if you want to have a little history with your meal, um, delicious comfort food, and um, just a unique experience. All right, Roberta? Delicious, serious comfort food. It's sophisticated, too. All right, and Joel? A, a winding road uh, into California's past where you come away with uh, great memories of a good restaurant and good food. All right, if you would like to try Bull Valley Roadhouse, it's on Canyon Lake Drive in Port Costa. The telephone number is 510-787-1135. It's open for bar service and small plates on Wednesday evenings, dinner Thursday through Sunday, and brunch on Sunday. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab without drinks is around $50. You know that feeling when you drink certain red wines? It's drying that puckers the sides of your cheeks. That sensation is caused by tannins. So what is tannin? A compound found in the skins of grapes? A compound found in the stems and seeds of grapes? A compound found in the oak barrels used to age wine? The answer is all of the above. Tannins in wine help them age and are most apparent in red wines as those grapes soak with the skins and seeds during winemaking. Over time though, tannins fall to the bottom of the bottle and the wine smooths out. Another way to tame tannins is to pair a big red with a big steak. Oh, a match made in heaven. Molecular cuisine in a miniature strip mall makes Joel's dining destination the ultimate Big Bang, where elegance and precision are married with stellar flavors and down-to-earth service. On Bennington Court in Vallejo at Michael Waring. 
My name is Michael Waring, and the name of my restaurant is Michael Waring. It's a very small restaurant that Ali and I run by ourselves here in Vallejo. We met at the Culinary Institute of American Upstate New York a few years later. We came together and we did this. When you work alone, as romantic as I thought it was going to be, and it's nice to be by myself in my kitchen all day, there's a lot more things that you have to do. The cooking is the sort of end result of lots of other things happening. Everything is choreographed and it's a set menu. My name is Ali Golzinski. I am the other half of Michael Waring. I do everything from serving our guests to cleaning the dishes. She will say that she does the dishes, but we, we both help together with the dishes. Sometimes I can't get away from the stove and she does more. And one day we're going to get a dishwasher and we're going to be living large. Our wine and beer list, it changes quite often. Most of our guests do choose the wine or beer pairing, so that allows me to kind of throw different style beer and wine in there for them to try. A lot of people don't really realize that when they do come here that they're either going to talk with me or Ali or the both of us and they give way to a sort of sense of, okay, we're in somebody's home, it's very small, we're going to really relax and enjoy ourselves. So. I love the juxtaposition of a mini strip mall with molecular gastronomy. How did you find Michael Waring? I never expected to find something like that there. I. I go usually to a restaurant either to enjoy a time with friends or, or revisit a memory of dishes that I've had and I've really liked before or to find a new memory and this has been an, a voyage of new memories. I've been there six times and not once have I not come away with a new memory. Um, my hairdresser had mentioned that he knew a guy and I should go try it and he tried it and I did and dang, oh wow. I was exposed to things that I had not been exposed to before. It's about the food. It it's is. truly about the food. So, you know, you're going there and you can have a civilized conversation with whomever you're there with and enjoy this food and watch a master at work, mm -hmm. I think. And I did enjoy it. There were a few minor uh, hiccups that I kind of got a sense of humor about mm -hmm. the salad course with the sprouted sunflower sprouts with the smoke just kind of reminded me of the 70s sprouts and incense and it was a little hard to eat but I, I really admired what he was doing and also that he just seems to fully curate this menu. I was blown away. I didn't know that, that, that this restaurant existed and of all places it's sort of in the middle of nowhere a little bit on, off of a golf course. They offer you to either have a seat at a table or the bar and at, at the bar you can watch, you can really see what he's doing and it's amazing to me the mm -hmm. work he's doing and, uh, and we did the beer pairing and the wine pairing. Wow. And we, it was perfect. And just spot on with the, with the pairings. Because you can add on to pair it with beer for yes. $20 or something. About and $22 then, uh, and the mm -hmm. wine about 33. Tell us a little bit more about each one of the courses as you guys went through. There was a Branzini fish course. It had been crisp with a torch and when it was torched the skin actually broke free of the meat and made like a crisp chip next to it. And then the the course that just took my breath away was the Egnolati with the black truffles at the right time of year thank you very much not Thanksgiving mm -hmm. but in February when it, it when they are just right where they should be and that was was a brilliant dish the duck was perfectly done. The fat was rendered uh, beautifully with, you know, so it wasn't greasy at all and it wasn't bloody, but it was mm -hmm. just right where it needed. Oh, you got me hungry, you yeah. got me hungry. Oh, the cheese course, I, I'm a big fan of how we did the cheese courses. Mm -hmm. He comes out with the cheese, which is nice. Homemade brioche, mm -hmm. uh, which they do every day. I think he paired the which cheeses they had brilliantly in that they all complemented one another and as opposed to having contrasts yeah. and things. You just leave feeling so satisfied. and Without and being stuffed. Without being stuffed and that you've experienced yeah. something very special. Mm -hmm. yes. I and I think that, that that is a real gift. Mm -hmm. So thank, 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 thank you, you for welcome. introducing us You're to welcome. that. If you sit right. at the counter, it's hard not to be involved with yeah. the food. And I felt like it was interactive, actually. It is. They take the time to explain each dish to you, where you know where it's from, where it originated, where the, the, the food came from, um, how it's cooked. And then again with the pairings, really nice. And I, what about dessert? We didn't we touched on cheese. Oh. Yeah, that yeah. was phenomenal. And it was um, a perfect mix of like salty, sweet, and textures that were fabulous. Chiffon cake. It was the, the chiffon, chiffon cake. cake. That's what it and was. And it had the marshmallow yes. burnt along the side, mm -hmm. which was a wonderful texture, and the I think chocolate coffee dirt. 
on the bottom, so it wasn't terribly heavy and a really nice ice cream with mm -hmm. it. And a little warm, a little cold, cold a little good salty, texture. a little sweet. Yeah, it was and I was there with a colleague and we used that time to really catch up. Now we were the only ones in the restaurant for the first hour. Right. And so it felt a little stark, but it was okay because we had a lot of catching up to do. And I thought that, you know, I have friends and colleagues in Sacramento and what a great halfway mm -hmm. point. Let's meet there, meet let's them. have a great dinner and catch up. Without breaking your bank. Without again. breaking the bank, mm -hmm. exactly. All okay. right, Joel, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. If you want an intimate setting to have a truly fabulous experience, Michael Warren is a place to go to enjoy flavors and textures you never possibly have had before. All right, and Shireen? Um, it's an out of the ordinary, unique um, experience, delicious foods, and, and it's like watching art. All right, and Roberta? Exquisite food with a master chef. Wonderful to be there. All right, if you would like to try Michael Waring, it's on Bennington Court at Hiddenbrook in Vallejo. The telephone number is 707-655-4808. It's open for dinner seatings at 5.30, 6.30, or 7.30 p.m., Wednesday through Sunday. Reservations are required, and the tasting menu per person without drinks is $69. I have to thank my guests on this week's show. Roberta Klugman introduced us to Cosecha in Oakland, where Mexican flavors and sauces shine. And Shireen Casira led us down the winding road to Bull Valley Roadhouse in Port Costa for a tummy warming comfort food endeavor. And lastly, Joel Rogers raised the bar with the sophisticated flavor combinations hidden away in Vallejo at Michael Waring. Now we really want to hear from you and hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. It's where you can apply to be a guest on the show and where you can watch every episode or subscribe to the podcast. You can also read my notes on all of the wines we're drinking and enjoying today. And you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter for exclusive behind the scenes clips, pics and notes from me. We do love hearing from you. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2015 Subaru Impreza are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru, online at Subaru.com. Integrated Resources Group, over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin, online at marblecompany.com. Natural Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport, with service to Europe, Mexico, Hawaii, and across the USA. Learn more at iflyoak.com. Onyx, Team Talk Redefined. Learn more at exploreonyx.com. Support KQED's vehicle donation program and donate a car to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by cars.